Pizza. Hello, my name is Rick, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, grab a snack. I, I've got about a 30 minute long video for you probably. I got seven Costa Rex products, and for each of them, I'm gonna go into ingredients, price, and efficacy. So, let's get to it. <laughs> I'm just gonna go in order like how people would usually use these products in their routine. So first I'm gonna start off with the low pH good morning cleanser. And I'd already seen this, I know it's already a popular product, I'd seen it on like Instagram and stuff like that. But this is gonna be great for people with oily skin because it foams a lot, probably due to the sodium cocoa isothionate, but it's not stripping. This is the most foaming product I've used that did not leave me stripped. I was really surprised. As the name implies, it's got a pH of around 5 to 6. Usually 5.5 is where the skin likes to hang out at, so it's going to be balancing should, I don't know, your pH be out of whack. <laughs> the cleanser actually has a lot of active ingredients, which is surprising to me because in a wash off product, you usually don't want to invest in your actives there because you, they all just go down the drain anyway. But I'll talk about the star ingredient. So one of the first active ingredients is Styrax Japonicus extract. And it was actually really hard to find a description for this ingredient. I had to like jump through multiple studies in like the references section to actually find like a, de def a definitive description of what it does and it basically it mediates the function of the MMP-1 enzyme which breaks down collagen in response to environmental stressors like UV radiation for example. Once again I don't know why that would be in a wash off product but it's there. The second active ingredient is Saccharomyces ferment and really any fermented product is just gonna help uh, active ingredients penetrate better because what the yeast does is it consumes the active ingredients and then metabolizes them and makes them more bioavailable for our skin to use while also adding its own like vitamins and minerals to better enrich the skin. So the blanket term for what Saccharomyces ferment extract does is it basically causes anti-aging because the yeast forms a symbiotic relationship with our skin and basically helps supercharge its functions. This actually has a lot of tree extracts and they're extracts that I've never really seen in products before. So I'm just gonna go down the list because they all kind of serve the same function. The first one's gonna be Cryptomeria japonica and that's a Japanese cedar. And that's gonna be antibacterial. Please excuse my pronunciation of this, but it's Nelumbo nucifera leaf extract. It's, it's an aquatic flower. Think of like a lotus that's floating on top of like a pond or something. And that has a lot of antioxidants. The third one is Pinus palustris. And that's a Japanese pine. It kind of sounds like pine. And that's going to be another antioxidant. The next one is Almus davidiana. And that's an elm tree's root extract. It actually has humectant sugars, which are going to help bind water to the skin. And it's also anti-inflammatory. It also has evening primrose flower extract. And that's usually seen in an oil form in which it has emollient properties and it's anti-inflammatory. So I don't know how potent it's going to be in just a simple extract, but I think the main benefit of Evening Primrose is the anti-inflammatory property it has. It also has Puerera... It also... It also has... I'm going to read it because it's long. Pueraria Lobata Root Extract, and that's antibacterial. Oh, it's got tea tree oil. So tea tree oil is usually recommended for those with acne prone skin because it's antibacterial, it's antiviral, and it's antifungal. So it's gonna be able to treat a wide array of conditions. It also has allantoin. I've talked about it in previous videos before, but it's mainly keratolytic, which means it's gonna help you shed the outermost layer of the skin. And then it's also calming and healing. Finally, it has betaine salicylate. And betaine salicylate, it's an ester of salicylic acid combined with an amino acid. And because it does need to be converted into salicylic acid in order to have the same properties, it's gonna be more gentle. So for those with sensitive skin, I'd probably reach for that ingredient more than straight up salicylic acid. And you do need double the dose of betaine salicylate in order for it to be just as effective as salicylic acid. And since it's so low on the ingredient list, I'm not sure how effective it's gonna be in this formula. So as for texture, it's just kind of like your typical gel cleanser. It's 
transparent, it's kind of runny. This one foams a lot, but it doesn't strip, like I said, which is why I was really surprised with it. And the scent is pretty strong. I think because of the pine, the elm, like all those different extracts from the trees, it kind of smells exactly how you think it would. It smells like you're like face deep in a Christmas tree. <laughs> And I actually don't mind it. I think it was really smart of them to market it as like a morning cleanser because it is kind of invigorating in the way that it kind of, it's really refreshing the scent of it, I think. So I would heavily recommend this product. I like the scent. I use it every morning almost specifically for the scent and it foams a lot. So if you're kind of married to the idea of like a really foaming cleanser, you'll love this because it's not stripping either. The next product I have is the BHA Blackhead Power Liquid. It goes for $22 for 3.38 ounces. I'm just gonna go straight into the ingredients because that's where most of my commentary is. So one of the first active ingredients it has is a willow bark water. And willow bark extract or water is usually seen as like a natural source of salicylic acid. And that's a little false because it actually has derivatives of salicylic acid. And the chance of that being converted into actual salicylic acid when applied to the skin is not very likely. So what it's mostly gonna provide is anti-inflammatory properties. Second, it has betaine salicylate and it has 4%, which as I established before, at double the dose, it's gonna be just as effective as salicylic acid without the irritation that salicylic acid might cause. If you didn't know what salicylic acid does, it's an oil soluble acid that's able to penetrate deeply into the pores where a lot of sebum has accumulated and basically break it up and make it easier to remove. So that's why it's marketed as a blackhead essence. It has niacinamide as well, which I've talked about in a bunch of videos, but basically it gives skin cells the energy they need to carry out their function. So it's basically gonna help with everything. It's gonna help restore your skin barrier. It's gonna help even out your skin tone. It's gonna help fade wrinkles and it's gonna help tighten pores as well. It has arginine, which is an amino acid. Amino acids are basically the building blocks of the skin. They help make proteins and it's essentially gonna carry out multiple functions throughout the body. Just like niacinamide has many applications, so does arginine. And then it has panthenol or vitamin B5 and that's gonna be calming and hydrating. Lastly, it has sodium hyaluronate, which is the sodium salt of hyaluronic acid and it's basically just gonna serve as a really, really strong water binding humectant. As for texture, it's like a slightly viscous liquid. You basically just dispense it onto a cotton pad of your hand and then distribute it onto your face. If I'm honest I found it kind of underwhelming like I'm kind of an isolated case in that my skin turns over really fast and I'm really prone to blackheads and this really didn't do much for me and the reason why I can say that I think it's the product that really wasn't effective was because I've used other products like the Stridex 2% salicylic acid pads that really did work for me so I think this might just be a little too gentle for me but for those with sensitive skin I would highly recommend it so it's not like it's a bad product or anything, it just didn't work for me. But for those with sensitive skin, I'd recommend it. The ingredients are solid, a little pricey, but you get a lot with it. I've had this for about two weeks and that's how much I've gone through, so I'd recommend it. If you're wondering why it keeps getting like slightly darker in terms of the lighting, it's because I always film or get around to filming in the evening when the sun starts going down. So I'm like literally watching it go down and that's why my face is getting darker, but if you wanted to know why, that's why. So the third product I have is the AHA 7 Whitehead Power Liquid. If you're wondering why some of these products have seven, it is the percent concentration of the active ingredient in the product. So this has 7% exfoliating acids in it. It goes for $19 for 3.38 ounces. And once again, I'm just gonna jump right into the ingredients. The first one is gonna be apple fruit water. And apple is seen as a natural source of malic acid, which is another AHA. But since it's like an apple fruit water, it's not gonna be very potent, so it's basically negligible. The main acid it's gonna have is glycolic acid at the 7% and glycolic acid has the smallest molecular size of all the AHAs, so it's gonna be able to penetrate deeper into the deeper layers of the skin, and basically, it kind of melts the junctions between the skin cells. Junctions are basically just the parts that kind of adhere the cells together, which is gonna make it more easily removable when you exfoliate. It also promotes collagen proliferation. <laughs> I'm not gonna keep repeating what some of these 
ingredients do because you'll see a lot of the same ingredients throughout their entire product line like niacinamide and stuff like that it would just be redundant and make this video way longer than it needs to be so I'm just gonna kind of read off the ingredients and if I don't describe it you'll know I would have said it in a previous product so along with the apple fruit water and the glycolic acid, it also has niacinamide, panthenol, and sodium hyaluronate. As far as the texture goes, it's a little bit thinner than the Blackhead Power Liquid, and it's the same application process. You put it on a cotton pad of your hands and then just distribute it onto the face. This one felt a little bit more effective to me. I felt like a slight tingling sensation that kind of assures me that it's actually doing something. Because I've used so many exfoliating acid products in the past, it did seem kind of underwhelming to me. But once again, if you have sensitive skin, this is going to be amazing for you. And on that basis, I would recommend it. This next product I love. It's the Advanced Snail 96 Mucin Power Essence. You see the number 96, so it actually has 96% snail mucin in the formulation. It's $21 for 3.38 ounces, and I'm gonna go right to the ingredients. <laughs> so the first ingredient, obviously the most potent, is the snail secretion filtrate. And if you're worried about how they source this from the snails, rest assured that there's no stressful environment that they're in. They basically, I read this from a Cosarex rep who talked to this other publication, but anyway, they basically allow them to kind of like slither along this mesh, and this mesh is essentially what gets the snail secretion and these snails basically like clock in clock out they have shifts they're basically on rotation so when one has been kind of going for a while they put them back in their enclosure so that they can rest and then the next group comes along and then provides them with more basically the process is done to provide the least amount of stress as possible on the snails snail secretion filtrate in itself has peptides which are anti-aging and it has this these molecules called glycosaminoglycans, I believe. And those are basically a category of humectants, one of them being hyaluronic acid. And they actually bind copper, and copper is really important for collagen synthesis. So it has really good anti-aging effects and humectant properties. It also has sodium hyaluronate, panthenol, allantoin and arginine. So because of the snail secretion filtrate, it actually has a really interesting texture. It's really thick, but when you kind of put your finger on it and pull away, it forms these strings that seem kind of weird, but then when you put it on, you can it almost, you can almost feel like the water like coming to your face. <laughs> It feels really hydrating and I actually kind of like it for that reason. I tend to really like thick serums, so I was immediately hooked on this product. There's nothing in it that should be irritating, so I'd highly recommend it. It could easily replace a hyaluronic acid serum as the snail secretion filtrate is gonna have more benefits than just a typical hyaluronic acid serum. And then it also does have the sodium hyaluronate, so it's like a win-win. <laughs> so after I went on like one trip to Ulta, I got like a few of the Cosrx line, but then I was on their website and there was a few products that I kind of regretted not getting, also that I just really wanted to try. So I ended up making like a second order online for some of the products that weren't available in store. And one of the products I ordered was the Advanced Snail 92 All-in-One Cream. And 92, it has 92% snail secretion filtrate. It's essentially kind of just like the essence, just in a different vehicle. Instead of it being in a serum, it's in a cream. So it has the snail secretion filtrate, it has sodium hyaluronate, it also has arginine and dimethicone. Dimethicone is a really occlusive silicone that's not pore clogging, so it's gonna help lock in the moisture in the skin. It also has panthenol and adenosine, and adenosine is another amino acid that helps stimulate collagen production. The texture has similar properties to the essence in that it's what you'd expect from a typical gel cream, only it does have that kind of stringy pull away that it's kind of gimmicky, but it like it got me, it kind of sold me. It's just so interesting to me. 
but as for who I would think this cream was for, I'd say for those with really oily skin. It's extremely light, it doesn't feel heavy at all, but at the same time it does feel moisturizing and it seems to effectively lock in the moisture. So I would highly recommend it for those with oily skin or if you just want like a light daytime moisturizer under other products. Another one of the moisturizers I got was the Hyaluronic Acid Intensive Cream. And I know they advertise the main ingredient as the hyaluronic acid, but there's several other ingredients I feel that are actually kind of the star of this moisturizer. So first it has sea buckthorn water and sea buckthorn is just full of antioxidants. It's got, it has vitamin C, E, and a whole bunch of polyphenols that are gonna help scavenge free radicals. In a water extract, once again, I don't know how potent it's gonna be, but can't do any harm. <laughs> the second ingredient is sunflower seed oil, which has vitamins C, E, and K. It also has omega fatty acids 3, 6, and 9, which are all anti-inflammatory. And lastly, it has oleic acid, which is really nutrient dense, but it can be a little heavy. So for those with oily skin, you might not prefer this product. So it also has macadamia seed oil, which has omega fatty acids 6, 7, and 9, which are all also anti-inflammatory. And then it has phytosterols, which basically mimic what cholesterol does for our skin, and it basically helps repair a damaged skin barrier. Lastly, it has sodium hyaluronate, arginine, panthenol, and allantoin. So as for texture, this one's like slightly thicker, but once again, it's what you'd expect from a typical gel cream. This one's a little bit heavier, so it's gonna make a good nighttime moisturizer or maybe if you have dry skin, a good everyday moisturizer. But also because it does have those heavy oils, if you are prone to fungal acne, it could actually feed that acne. So the only people I would really recommend it for are those with dry skin and those with combo skin, not necessarily acne prone or if you have fungal acne, but I would recommend the product nonetheless. <laughs> okay, now we need to have like a real conversation for a second because I was disappointed after I had purchased this product about one of the ingredients that I was neglecting of when I first got it, but the product is the Honey Ceramide Full Moisture Cream and it has palm oil in it and in wake of what's been happening in Brazil with the rainforests being intentionally burned and excavated to make room for economic prosperity, I guess. Um, I think it's really important to open up a conversation about what we can do as consumers to contribute to the conservation of the planet. <laughs> so I distinctly remember, like in my bio class a couple quarters ago, my professor taking the time while we were talking about ecology to talk about some of the main contributors to the destruction of rainforests and one of them she said was palm oil specifically in Malaysia and Indonesia but rainforest nonetheless and the thing about rainforests is it's one of the most biodiverse environments on the planet just from the nature of what it provides resource wise and it contributes to the well-being of a multitude of different types of animals and plant life. And if it's one thing that I remember being drilled into my head and that stuck with me in bio is that biodiversity is the key to longevity of a species. 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 Sorry. And so what happens when these plant oil farms are created is that a lot of plant life is cleared out and a lot of the animals living there are either killed in the process or relocated. And not only does that change the terrestrial landscape, but it changes the atmospheric makeup as well. We all know by way of photosynthesis that plants convert, essentially, carbon dioxide into oxygen. And what happens when all these modes of conversion are taken out of the equation is that carbon dioxide can just freely, freely roam in our atmosphere and create holes in the ozone layer and lower the pH of our oceans, which ruins the biodiversity there as well. I just feel like we're witnessing the first stage of what will eventually be a dis disastrous chain of events. And I hope that this economically motivated choice made by the Brazilian government 
will inspire those internationally to do what we can to help perpetuate conservation of the planet and hopefully contribute to an overall consciousness that what we're profiting from now will eventually cost us way more down the line. <laughs> like way more. And there also needs to be a change in consumer culture as well. Because, I mean, f first I'm just going to say I'm not perfect. Like I'm not trying to preach to anybody because there's a lot of moves I can make in my own personal life to contribute to the conservation and to the political message to whoever represents us that we don't want to contribute to the destruction of our planet. So don't take this as me being like, put, putting myself up on a pedestal and trying to preach down to people. But I just want to spread awareness and hopefully do what I can at least to contribute to the progression of everyone's way of thinking. But what all of us can do is realize that money talks. Money is the only language that these big CEOs speak. And the only way they're going to listen is if they look at the stats and they say, they see, oh shit, like this product isn't doing well, I wonder why. But these products are doing very well. What's the difference? These are in sustainable packaging. These ones are using responsibly sourced ingredients. So we have the power to change the stats, what the CEOs, the marketers see, and that's where our power lies. And once again, I'm not saying I'm innocent because like, I review personal care products. Personal care products come in a lot of packaging that can't be recycled or that is not handled properly and contributes to a lot of the pollution of our oceans and landfills and stuff like that. So I need to try to do better. Once again, I just really want to help spread awareness and try to make strides in my own personal life to make more sustainable choices and seek out the products that actually attempt to help better the planet. So with all that said, I'm not going to recommend this product right off the bat even though I've used it before I learned of what was in it and I liked it a lot. But there's other creams like this that don't have palm oil in it like the CeraVe Skin Renewing Night Cream. It's very similar to this. It's a bit more waxy, a little bit more balmy, but it essentially serves the same purpose. This does have some good ingredients in it, so I'm just going to use that as an opportunity to talk about those specific ingredients, but I'm just going to tell you I don't recommend this cream. That's that. And the two ingredients I'm going to talk about are the honey and the ceramides. So honey, naturally, is just antibacterial. It's anti-inflammatory. It's going to help calm whatever irritant has stimulated your skin to react in some adverse way. And then ceramides. So Paula's Choice had like a really good example of how to think of ceramides. And you want to th think of like a brick wall. So there's brick and there's mortar. And mortar is the stuff in between the bricks that adheres it all together. Ceramides are essentially the mortar. They're going to be the sealing and protective layer of the skin barrier that helps keep in hydration, moisturization, and keeps contaminants out. And the reason why you'd want that, because we do produce it naturally, but the reason why you'd want it in a skincare product is because as we get older, we steadily decrease the amount that we make. So it's really more preventative using it now, but it's a really good ingredient. That's why, I mean, CeraVe has essentially based their entire branding on it, and it's for a good reason. It's a really good ingredient. So first I'm just gonna say I recommend all the products besides the honey ceramide cream for the palm oil but some of them that really stood out to me and that I preferred were the low pH good morning gel cleanser the advanced snail 96 use and power essence and then the advanced snail 92 all-in-one cream and the Hyaluronic Acid Intensive Cream. So if you like this video, feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any brands that you would like see, to see reviewed in the future, feel free to leave a comment. And if you'd like to follow my Instagram at rickskin underscore, I post little like mini reviews, uh, video announcements, and texture shots. So if you'd like that, go ahead and follow me there. And I'd like to thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.